Hi Briars, Tenny Bear here. Today we get down and dirty with some dancing dung beetles as we find out from Professor Byrne exactly how an animal with a brain the size of a grain of rice can use celestial cues to find its way to and from piles of poop. This little guy prefers to stash his dung in a nest, a little distance away from the pile. He does this by rolling the ball in a straight line from the dung pat whilst walking backwards. Now, Professor Byrne has had a lot of time running past piles of poo in the desert, and in that time, he noticed something peculiar about the behavior of the dung beetles. For instance, this little dance that they do on top of their dung balls. Apparently, this isn't just a little poo victory dance. This dance actually helps the dung beetle to keep cool, orientate himself according to the sun in the sky. And this is how he finds his way from the pile of dung to his nest. Watch as the dung beetle gets turned around 90 degrees on his march back home from the store. And even without any landmarks to help him, he does his little dance and keeps going in the right direction. And here again, even when the evil scientists make him do a 180 degree turn, he seems pretty sure of where he's supposed to be. He does his little dance and heads back in the direction that he knows that he should be going. So the question is, how does he know where he's going? And what's this dance all about? Well, like many other insects, such as bees, dung beetles' eyes can detect the polarization of light. The main source of light in the sky is, well, the sun. And this ability means a dung beetle can actually detect when the sunlight or even the stars at night have changed their position and adjust his movements accordingly. Just as the professor discovered, dung beetles use this nifty superpower to navigate. Think of it as an entirely natural, solar-powered GPS, inbuilt right in here. Now check this out. The professor and his team of experimenters use a mirror to reflect the sun so that it would appear in a different position from the beetle's perspective. This is how scientists figured out that some beetles orientate themselves using the sun rather than using landmarks on the surface. But if you thought that was the limits of the rice grain brain smarts, think again. We go to Professor Byrne himself now to explain the other cool reasons these little guys dance and why on earth they put boots on their dung beetles to figure it out. Um, interesting question. We, the the boots I'll get to in a moment. The dance we think is involved in orientation behavior. So we think what they're doing is climbing on top of the ball to look at the sun to find an orientation direction and to fix that direction. But we were working with these animals in very hot sunshine and we realized that as we were getting hot they were also getting very very hot. And we thought that the dance might have another function and that is to actually keep the animals cool. So what we did was we put them in hotter and hotter and hotter situations and recorded how many times they climbed onto the ball to dance. And we found that there was a direct correlation between the temperature of the soil and the number of dances the beetles made. So they were literally using this thing as a thermal refuge like you do when you cross to the beach on a hot day. You climb onto a towel and you go, oh, you take a few minutes respite on the towel and then you head off again across the hot beach, they were doing exactly the same by climbing onto the ball to escape the heat of the ground. And the reason we put little boots on them is because when they're head down, pushing the ball uh, backwards, it's their front feet and their head that are in the hot sand. And by putting the boots on, we were able to m uh, manipulate their behavior and actually make them dance less because their feet didn't get so hot. So it was a very, very simple experiment to show that the beetles danced more because they were hot and it was mediated through their front feet and if we insulated their front feet they danced less. So what you were looking for wasn't something just to cool them down but a material that would specifically stick to them? Absolutely, it was primarily an insulator not a cooler but the difficulty with these guys is getting anything to stick to them and a lot of our experiments have involved putting a hat on the dung beetles believe it or not to stop them looking at the sky so now that we've made fashionable little boots for the beetles and matching hats for them, are the hats made just to cool them down? No, the, the hats are literally uh, interfering with their visual orientation system. So, so the hat we've used day and night 
to stop them looking at the sky. So the nocturnal beetles look at the moon and they look at the stars. And then the day active beetles, um, we put hats on them to stop them looking at the sun and the polarised light that's in the sky around them. So it's not a really, a, it's cool, but it's not cooling. So it seems that whatever you do, you can't keep a dung beetle from its poo. You're right. <laughs> and thank goodness that they are so keen. And there's, there's two reasons to be happy for that. One is that they clean up the planet and they are excellent recyclers. And the second reason is for us as experimenters, they are absolutely fabulous because they just never stop. You cannot um, dissuade these guys from rolling their balls and it makes them a perfect experimental animal. It was fantastic having you here today, Professor Byrne, and we look forward to seeing you again and more of the research that you have going forward. Uh, thanks, Ten. Thanks for the invitation and thanks for your interest in these fascinating little animals. Until next time, Briars, stay sizzling. Like, share and subscribe to The Cybri Show. Check out cybri.co.za and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.